Like any Seth MacFarlane work, death comes up pretty frequently in American Dad. But of all the deaths that have happened throughout the series so far, which one was the most gruesome? I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge, and this is American Dad Death's Gruesome to Most Gruesome. For this list, we'll be covering the most memorable death scenes in the show. Some will be characters close to the main cast, others will be secondary characters we couldn't help but to add due to the impression they left. First on our list, we have deaths that were instant and or merciful. Taking the gold medal of least gruesome death, we have Darren the Dodo. Darren had more than a few close encounters with death throughout the episode. He nearly cooked himself, almost blended himself, and got a hold of one of Stan's guns. But after accompanying Stan to hunt down Glitter, Darren is struck by lightning, turning him to ash. The silver medal of least gruesome death goes to the raccoon. The flashback raccoon has been an ongoing gag on the show, but we're referring to the original raccoon that Stan killed after meeting Francine. By Stan's account, they had hit the animal as it ran across the road. It didn't die an impact, but Stan quickly remedied that fact with a bullet to the head to end its suffering. The bronze medal of least gruesome death goes to the dirty cop Chaz. After Roger became determined to be a powerful guy, he quickly joined the police force. Due to his progress, Roger was then scouted by Chaz, who offered to help Roger get even with the mugger that humiliated him. That was my first taste of real power, and it felt great. Their relationship quickly escalated until they wound up on the CIA's radar. When Chaz gave Roger the choice to kill Stan or die with him, Roger turned on the dirty cop. Chaz then ended up killed with a brutal blow courtesy of Roger's elbow with the man's head exploding at the impact. Our next ranking goes to both Melinda and Henry. Both of these characters were associated with Francine and met similar ends. Melinda was a blind date set up for Avery. After a night out, Melinda and Avery had gone back to his home where Melinda made the mistake of sneaking up on the CIA operative. Avery, taken by surprise, wound up snapping her neck. Henry, on the other hand, was a man who saved Francine from the well as a child. For decades after, Henry lived in the well to the point that he couldn't readjust to life on the surface. After saying his parting words to Francine, Henry made the horrible choice to dive headfirst into a dry well which resulted in him breaking his neck. Our next ranking on this list goes to General Juanito Pequino. Yes, the general also was ultimately killed by a broken neck after falling on an escalator. But we rank him as a tad more gruesome than Henry or Melinda due to the fact that he also started choking on a corn dog. That added moment of fear that caused him to stumble back and seal his fate earned the general a few extra points. Next up, we have the first two deaths endured by Dr. Ray. Dr. Ray died a few times in the show, but we're placing his first two deaths in this spot. The first time Ray was killed was when he attempted to save the Smiths from ants when they were shrunk down. Unfortunately, Ray wound up being decapitated and eaten by an ant while his guard was down. The next death we have for Dr. Ray took place when Stan was reunited with the Harlem Globetrotters from his childhood. After seeing the Globetrotters perform tricks with grenades, more of the explosives were thrown towards the team Stan and Dr. Ray. Ray made the unfortunate choice to try and replicate the tricks, but was blown up as he reached for the grenade. The following ranking goes to the former Hollywood starlet, June Rosewood. When Stan dashed June's hopes to be with the man she thought was her reincarnated husband, she felt she had no choice but to kill Francine in retaliation. When Stan showed up to save her, June decided to also kill Stan as she had Leonard all those years before. June was then distraught when Francine and Stan chose to die together, with Francine claiming to remember her life as Gloria. June leapt into the water to die with her husband, and Stan and Francine were able to climb back onto the boat. When Stan decided to tease June a little before saving her, he ended up running her over, killing her. The next spot goes to Steve's clone, Steve Arooney. After being found out by Stan and Francine, the clone is confronted in a warehouse where he kept the real Steve. The fight resulted in everyone assuming Steve Arooney was dead, but he actually met his end by Simon the Cat, who was seen holding a gun to the clone's head. Next, we have the pro-gun mascot, Bobby the Bullet. He had been one of the many trying to find Haley when Stan put up the reward to stop her from getting married. Unfortunately for Bobby, he died after a bus crash propelled him through the air. 
he wound up getting impaled through Brett Morris and was killed on impact. Our next section of this ranking goes to those that were shot or sliced. Our first ranking in this section goes to the Smith's first dog, Thor. Thor was an elderly mutt that was nearing the end as it was, but he also had the honor of being the first official death in this series. After Stan was put on high alert, hearing a bottle break in the kitchen, Stan wound up shooting Thor. Next up, we have the activities director and war criminal, Goran the Mutilator. After a picture exposed Goran for who he really was, Francine and Stan soon teamed up in order to assassinate the wanted criminal. But in the end, the man who wound up killing Goran was the lovable gardener who was able to shoot Goran from his hand glider. Taking the next spot is Snot's sex clone, Honey, or at least the clone he intended to be his sex clone. After leaving Honey behind at the Smith home, she revealed that she was a clone, resulting in Stan shooting her to prevent her from being found by the CIA. A former friend and poker buddy of Stan's, we have Bad Larry. Bad Larry had been one of the men to try and help Stan find someone to make his first kill. In a twist of events, Bad Larry had ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time and got shot by Stan. The next rank goes to the serial killer Stan hired for his haunted house. Though they were freed by Roger, they were unsuccessful in hunting down and killing the Smiths. These killers were found by Toshi, who decided to turn his sword against them since he decided not to kill Steve. Following is another one-time appearance, the Colonel. When the Smiths rallied some friends and neighbors to trick Roger into thinking they were all killed, they had set things up to look like the Colonel had been the one to massacre them. Roger had been in a fit of rage after the reveal, lunging at the Colonel and stabbing him repeatedly. Up next on our list is Avery's ex-wife, Miriam. It was shown in a flashback that Roger's persona of Ricky Spanish was the one responsible for Miriam's death. He recounted to Avery that he had gotten carried away at her birthday party and wound up impaling her with a sword. The next ranking goes to Krampus. After Santa raided his castle, Krampus was gunned down by the jolly Christmas icon. Though the spirit of Krampus was able to continue on after merging with Jack, we had to include the tragic death of the spirit that wound up bonding with Steve. Following Krampus is Jack Smith. Jack died a couple of different times in the series, the first of which was in the episode Minstrel Krampus. After Jack was convinced by Haley to go help Stan and Steve, Jack busted in during Santa's raid on Krampus's castle. Though Jack wasn't able to save Krampus, he was able to take the bullet for his son and grandson. You came to help me. The second time, Jack was gunned down while fleeing after a robbery. Next on our list, we have those that were crushed or fell to their deaths. First up, we have two characters that had similar deaths, Carmen Selectra and Becky. Both had been crushed to death. Carmen's death was the result of the stage at Roger's spring break collapsing. Becky's death had been when she attempted to get leaves to gather rainwater, resulting in the cave wall falling apart on top of her. Next is the former Bazooka Shrugs athlete, Johnny Concussion. One would think Johnny would have eventually died due to his injuries. Instead, Johnny had fallen to his death while trying to escape after a failed robbery and bombing attempt. Our last ranking in this section goes to Brett Morris. When Stan wound up driving Brett to the point of attempting to take his life, Brett was revived after he pledged his life to Satan. While he didn't make any major appearances after this episode, we do see him die after he's struck by Bobby the Bullet. Next, we have those that died sacrificing their lives. Our first ranking in this section goes to The Weeknd. It was explained earlier in the episode that The Weeknd was able to gain power by maintaining his virginity, which he initially planned to use to see dinosaurs. But when Francine nearly died, The Weeknd decided to instead use his power to save her, though it resulted in him dying. Up next is the alien that took Jeff's place, Zeebler. After learning about sacrifice and the kindness humans were capable of, Zeebler decided to bring Jeff back for Haley the only way he could, by replacing his own brain with the one taken from Jeff. Speaking of Jeff, we have another person that lost their life for him, Sinbad. He had been killed during the revolution Jeff started against Emperor Zing. Even though he pleaded for Jeff to finally leave so he could focus on fighting, Sinbad was overpowered and killed by Zing's guards. 
For this next spot, we have to mention Stan Smith. After he was recruited by Jesus to save Francine, Stan agreed only so he would finally be raptured. I'll do it. In the end, Stan had sacrificed himself to save both Jesus and Francine after the Antichrist nearly shot them. Next up, we have those that died melting or drowning. First up, we have Cyborg Stan. When Stan confronted his cyborg future self at Hershey Park, he was able to use training he gained to take down the robotic smith. The cyborg was knocked off course and plummeted into a giant mug of hot chocolate, messing up his robotic body and melting his artificial skin. Next up is former president Jimmy Carter. After Steve came across the truth about the Illuminati, Jimmy Carter showed up to try and stop the youngest smith. He was tricked by Stan and Steve and is last seen melting in a pit of lava. Taking the next spot is DJ Iron Monkey and the guest of his yacht party. DJ Iron Monkey, along with the others, was shown to have drowned after Haley, Francine, and Roger pulled the giant cork on the bottom of the boat. Given the fact that the entire boat was set up to be a large party scene, we can only imagine the chaos and confusion as the place filled with rushing water. Finally, we've come to Roger's one night stand. We'd like to be more specific, but in the credits, she's only listed as girl. After a hurricane swept through the area, she wound up staying in the Smith home, continuing to pester an uninterested Roger. After she was impaled by the chandelier, she was assumed to be dead. Later on in the episode, she surfaced in the water, scaring Roger and showing that she was still clinging to life even after being impaled and losing a lot of blood. Roger, not at all interested in being around her anymore, took advantage of her weakened state and submerged her in the water where she ultimately drowned. Finally, in our last section, we have those that died through cruel and tormented means. While Honey earned a spot earlier in this ranking, Glitter fell towards the more gruesome end of the spectrum. Unlike Honey, who was shot as soon as Stan found out she was a clone, Glitter reached the age of the girl she was cloned from. She collapses and starts to break down dead before Stan could kill her himself. Next up, we have Gret and Terry's adopted son, Michael. While flying to the United States to meet his new family, Michael couldn't have anticipated a jealous and homicidal alien being on board. After asking for directions to the bathroom, Roger took the chance to open the door to a plane thousands of feet in the air. Michael was quickly sucked out. Since it's hard to be sure how long it was before Michael lost consciousness, we had to rank this one as one of the most terrifying and gruesome deaths of the show. Taking our next spot is Anne Fleming. When Francine attempted to come clean and leave the ladybugs, she was threatened with meeting the same fate as Anne Fleming. Though Anne didn't have any lines in the show, she was revealed to have been the woman crushed to death in a cart corral. Taking the bronze medal of most gruesome death is Haley's husband, Jeff. While we don't see his death happening, we are given a clear view of Jeff's dismembered body on the collector's ship. You are in luck. He's right there. The look of horror on his face as we see his head suspended in one of the displays hints at the terror he felt being ripped apart in his final moments. Our silver medal of most gruesome death goes to the Smith's short-lived dog, Kisses. What can we say about Kisses? He was, without a doubt, one of the most traumatic deaths of the entire series. After he was crushed by a hot air balloon run by pirate cats, Kisses was declared as unable to be saved. Determined, Stan insisted on finding someone that would be willing to save the small dog. When Stan returned home with a so-called healed Kisses, we were shown that the dog was in a horrible state of suffering. In the end, Stan finally came to the choice to blow up Kisses and end his his misery. Finally taking the gold medal of most gruesome death, we have Dr. Ray. It's hard to say which of these last two deaths was worse, being skinned and ripped apart by the escalator or being inflated by a leaf blower to the point of exploding. Unlike the first deaths Ray experienced that we covered earlier on this list, Ray was fully aware of what was happening to him in these last two. He's heard screaming in horror as he's shredded alive by the escalator. When he was being inflated, we're given a close-up of his expression showing his horror of what was happening. And that was after he had been sucked up by a small tornado caused by the spirit of the former groundskeeper. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. 
Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our most gruesome playlist, where we break down the most gruesome moments in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.